the Around the NFL podcast. It's another show with Levi. From the Chris Wesley podcast studio, it's Around the NFL. I am Dan Hansis. Got heroes here, Greg Rosenthal, Mark Sessler. And yes, you are in the iconic Levi jacket. You're lucky that I, you know, complied from a wardrobe store. Right. I, had I been here, you know, with more time, I was going to switch into a, a button-down shirt. What a coincidence so. it is that you're wearing the right. jacket when that drop hits. Yeah, it's a it's a day that ends in Y. We, <laughs> we lucked out. <laughs> um, and also with us, uh, listen, it's been a while since he's been on ATN. Uh, and we're happy to have him. If if Rich Eisen is the face, then this man is the conscience of NFL media. You know who it is. <laughs> yes. Steve Weish. Boy, yo. He's the one with that white hair, man. I think it's like wisdom or something. Ooh, yeah. Steve Weish. Oh, man. Steve Weish. You guys, man. <laughs> it, this is awesome. A bit about life. I have to say, we've had so many great songs uh, <laughs> submitted exactly. by our listeners through the years. Yeah. But I don't know if there's anything better than the Steve Weiss. I mean, this is, that's effort. I, I mean, I, I am just so like. It sounds very professional. By, it, it sounds really professional. We have to get Tua to play this on the end season hard knock. He's a big reggae fan there. So. He Pretty was cool. great on the Manning cast. He was great. You playing playing the guitar? A, some, yeah, some guitar. Yeah. I would roll around town listening to this on loop. Yeah, nothing like Tears of Heaven to really bring the party going. <laughs> Evan Hornsby uh, with that. Well done. Banger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, all right, we got Steve here. I love it. Thanks um, so much for having me. I'm excited. Big show. Um a little housekeeping before we get going. We got so much to get to. We're gonna do uh, open up the mailbag. We're gonna check in on that TNF banger. What's the over under at now? Is it in the twenties? I will check. I believe it. They kept it at thirty. It keeps sinking. <laughs> Pittsburgh, New England. Uh, we're gonna it, play. It made it to thirty. <laughs> it's it, at thirty it fell and a half down right now. to thirty. Yes. Oh, it's down to thirty. Oh my gosh. Uh, we're gonna get some news, but uh, uh, just so little palace intrigue uh, for oh, around wow. the NFL. Uh, today, Steve, was picture day for Around the NFL. I love it. Yeah, and uh, Greg and I were here. Um, Mark wasn't, and you you told us you had a perfectly good reason not to be here. Yeah. Um, so do we, we're good with that, Greg? Are we cool in-house with Mark? I mean, we have to be, right? We yeah. have to be. We were here. We took the pictures. And we and it was supposed to be headshots and then group photos, which I did not know that that, that second part, but I couldn't have changed my plan right. It was the right there in the email. It was yeah. all very clear. Multiple but we we too. got you. So uh, we asked, uh, what was her name? Maddie. Was Maddie, it? of Maddie, course, who did, did an awesome job. job. Uh, we did this. We got we got one of the shots. Check it out on YouTube. Uh, we made sure to kind of leave a spot for Mark, and then oh, I went ahead. Thank you. And I I took care of this and did a little Photoshop to get you. And I know Camp Happiness is your favorite era, uh, so here is the other photo. There we go. <laughs> yes. So this will be the photo. And, Unbelievable. And yes, uh, we'll, we'll send it out. Oh, then I don't need to. Uh, we don't no, need to. No, you're coming. You're good. We got you. All right, cool. We I got mean, your it, back. You know, slightly ominous that the <laughs> first group shot in about a decade uh, doesn't include me. I don't know what that means for the future, but I, will, I took a child to the dentist today. So I hope that w it works as a. We got your back. All right. We're, we're good. good. We're good. That was from high school, that picture, by the way. That was not from summer camp. You That's look, not from Camp Happiness? No. All right, I'll get back to work. Ridiculous field near my house. You do look like you could, you know, use some lotion or some uh, sunscreen. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. No, uh, dangerous sunburn back then. All right, Steve. You can Photoshop. Sorry, Steve. I mean, on, on the promo, on the, on the, on the, <laughs> hey, on, on the photo for NFL Game Day preview, yeah. it's Photoshopped so, like, Andrew Siciliano and I are at the same height. <laughs> so they so they can get you in there. You'll be okay. fine. Just take, I, I just would, take a new photo. They've got the skills. Yeah, yeah. Really I was saying we took some photos of, of Greg and I, and, and we're not a good match in photos because it makes me look bigger and Greg looks smaller. And, of course, Greg's like, nah, I don't see that. And he's like, well, I was like, we look I good. Do. We look great. I thought I you do. looked uh, stunning, the yeah. two of you. Nice All job. Right. Here we go. Steve. <laughs> yes, yes. You have a Derwin James interview, so we can't, we can't be, like, pussyfooting around here. You know? It's all right. <laughs> Derwin will wait. Yeah, yeah, you can wait. Uh, let's do it. Let's get it. We've got so much to get to. Let's start, though, with some news. You see DK set the record this year? That's no, the 35. Over 22 miles an hour. Still as fast as ever in his fifth year in the league. 22-6. I hit uh, 23 my rookie year. 
I probably will never hit that again. <laughs> that is Tyreek Hill from the Hard Knocks in season. Which uh, is amazing. The Dolphins. Which is spectacular. Really? I have not checked it out. It's great. Yeah. Okay. It is great. Mm. And uh, as I've said many times in the show, Next Gen, Big Next Gen doesn't want people to know that everyone goes 21 miles per hour. But we're starting to see, we're starting to see some cracks and movement there because DK on Thursday night on that 75-yard touchdown, crack 22, and there's Tyreek. I believe him when he was a rookie before he got a little older and some injuries, was hitting 23. So we're mo starting to move away from 21 miles per hour. That's good. This is a big th – Dan's been on this beat I can tell for he's, a while. He's, yeah. he's hung up on this. Yeah. What about you, <laughs> Steve? You ever have, like, yeah. a pick six or anything uh, in college or, or in the pros and you were able to get? Never in the, the pros. pros. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what are we talking about here? <laughs> you never know. Did you ever hit – you ever hit 20, you think? Uh, no, because back when I was playing, everything was kind of being measured by sand dials. Mm. There was no such thing as next-gen <laughs> sports. So maybe, you know, if, if a shadow moved sand a little dials. bit in front, that worked. You know, I was, I was on the Sophocles time scale. <laughs> we were definitely no, uh, Socrates, not Sophocles. Um, but no. All right, good wouldn't, to know. Wouldn't, did, no. did you have a pick six, though, in, in any time in your play? In high school, yeah. Yeah, That's pretty cool. In front few, of all your classmates, they're watching you. I've had some big house. I've had some big house runs. Calls? That's great. Qu quarterback, about a 65 yard quarterback sneak to the house. No Ooh, oh, hell yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I, I've got, I've got Why a nice can't we do If they gave Jake Browning a full segment about his high school exploits a few weeks ago, why don't we just drop it into game day morning? I don't know if Weiss had 91 touchdowns in a season, but. No, I don't know. have 91 touchdowns in a season. <laughs> I'd have 91 <laughs> touchdowns in a career. And again, there's probably video mm. of Jake Browning. Right. Mine, <laughs> mine was like on tape that has warped. And Steve is 114 and years old yes. based on uh, the I, developments the of today's show. Helmets. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's get to it. We'll start with Trevor Lawrence, the Jaguars quarterback who suffered that high ankle sprain on Monday night. Man, it looked bad when it happened. Uh, but here is the good news. The injury is not one that ends a season. Um, and on top of that, uh, there's a report from Jeff Howe of The Athletic that he is going to, quote, rehab around the clock this week to give himself a chance to play through his high ankle sprain per sources. Too early to know how the ankle will respond and whether he'll be available Sunday, but they are not ruling it out. Here is Doug Peterson on the situation. So starting with Trevor, obviously, it's just a right um, high ankle sprain. Uh, everything's stable. Everything looks good. Um, and, and we'll see where he is here in a couple of days. One of those injuries that you, you just don't know how right serious it's going to be because there's different high ankle sprains. Kenny Pickett required the surgery. Trevor Lawrence isn't getting that. I even think of Ryan Tannehill. He's had multiple high ankle sprains. Some he just played through, essentially. Some he's missed, you know, two, three weeks. This week seems like a stretch, but they do have a Ravens Sunday night game in week 15. So maybe he, he's pointing towards only missing one game. It's still just the way that they were talking today. He's definitely not going to practice At Cleveland. Like, that would be week. that would be a, a big surprise. And they could potentially lose their lead in the division if, if they lose yeah. two games with that. Sitting at eight and four. That is a nasty two pack of games. Um, the Browns are pretty banged up, too. Uh, but without if you have C.J. Beathard in there, who didn't look terrible in relief, uh, but that that's a completely different situation. Trevor Lawrence is very tough to prepare for. Well, I mean, look, they're, they're playing Cleveland, which is going to be either Flacco or DTR. Uh, and the Jags defense can, can come up and make a couple plays, which they should be able to do. I mean, it gives them an opportunity. This is one where you say, OK, we're playing a backup quarterback one way or another. One's coming out of concussion protocol or one who's playing in a second NFL game. So our defense should be able to get us there if we're as good as we think we are defensively. If you want to win the division, you win these type of games and you have your backup quarterback. Yeah. Oh, I would say they probably felt the same way about Jake Browning, and that was a bit of a national surprise. But that, well, that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I mean, Browning was, Browning was pretty spectacular in that game. He was. In other news, Vikings quarterback Josh Dobbs will start on Sunday against the Raiders. Uh, this, speaking of palace intrigue, uh, I think – it kind of went on. Everyone's attendance a little bit after the Monday night loss to the Bears before their bye week. O'Connell came out in the post game presser and was like, "Yeah, you know, we're gonna have to evaluate everything. Who makes Justin Jefferson uh, the most dynamic?" Here is Kevin O'Connell after making the decision to stick with Dobbs. Uh, I want to address the quarterback position. Uh, we will be starting Josh Dobbs uh, in the football game on Sunday. Uh, feel great about. Uh, kind of our bye week process of really, uh, you know, two layers to it, evaluating uh, kind of where Josh has been as far as uh, immediately providing a spark and helping us win two football games. 
Um, and then, you know, transitioning to uh, some tough, uh, you know, tough outcomes where uh, there's all kinds of things that we could, we could do better, we could coach better. Uh, Josh has continued comfort. Um, in our offense and, and how we play, but also uh, our offense and, and our staff's ability uh, to evolve and, and, and help Josh thrive. Hmm. Uh, he added that Nick Mullins, the backup, will be ready to go. There's also a rookie in the mix, Jaron Hall. Uh, Greggy, I liked your theory. Uh, this is the team around the NFL, by the way, so this is an important decision being made by the head coach. I liked your theory. Throw it out there. Now, this isn't based on any reporting, but I kind of No, because he caught us off guards, Kevin O'Connell, right after that game. And then the Monday after saying how he's got to have to look at everything, including the quarterback position and changes could be made. And my theory was in that game when Dobbs was throwing interception after interception, maybe at that point, you know, they're having a conversation. It's like, whatever you do, just like, just don't turn the ball over anymore or, you know, be careful this or that. Like he. And Dobbs, that fourth interception he, he had in that game was one of the worst interceptions anyone had all season. He's just like falling down Jameis Winston style, throws it to nowhere. And I, I think it kind of blew Kevin O'Connell's mind there for a couple of days and he had to calm down emotionally. But I, I'm glad to see Josh Dobbs over Jaron Hall or Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins leading the team of around the NFL podcast just That's doesn't good. have the things, same vibe. Things grow dark at that point. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the Dobbs also. I mean, there. It, when the guy came there, I mean, look, he's moving, he's doing all this stuff. It gives him the immediate spark. But that's one where a coach has to say, okay, this is one where my guy got the yips in a game, where everything just came, the snowball came downhill. It was a total collapse. If we start seeing it in the next game, then we can go to Nick Mullins. But right now we're going to give him another shot. And build an offense around him. He's yeah. a very different quarterback, and this gives him a week to do that. Well, that bye week came at the ideal time. It really did. In other quarterback news, uh, more palace intrigue, this one out of Florham Park in New Jersey. Oh, boy. Uh, the New York Jets uh, dealt with a major, major drama around Zach Wilson. Uh, we talked about the backstory with this, uh, that word had gotten out and reported by The Athletic that Wilson was apprehensive about returning to his starting role two weeks after he had been benched by the Jets, citing uh, concerns about his health and, you know, an uncertain future that likely doesn't involve the Jets. Bob Sala, uh, that's poor guy. I, I know I can't, I'm coming down hard on Sala and, and the Jets in general on the show lately, but I really do like Robert Sala. He seems like a really good and decent man, and and, and he is not um, in a good situation. And it, it just things are snowballing on him, and he's the face of it. So it's just kind of I can be frustrated as a fan, but also I feel badly for Sala. So now here he is announcing that indeed Zach Wilson will be his quarterback on Sunday. Zach gives us our best chance to win, um, and uh, giving him another opportunity to go prove that. How did that conversation go when you told him? Uh, he was good. He's fired up. Uh, like I said uh, on Monday, he came into my office. He wants the ball, uh, and he's excited about getting this opportunity to finish the season strong. So is he your starter the rest of the year, no matter what? God willing. Oh, man. Uh, Steve. Um, God willing is not where I would have gone with that. But uh. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers uh, on the McAfee show on Tuesday, he kind of sco scolded the whole Jets locker room for too many leaks this season, and ESPN reported uh, that what likely happened per a source is that Wilson asked a teammate for advice on the risk reward of playing a late season game with no playoff implications. Uh, and from that word got out that he had reservations. So someone in that locker room, Steve kind of snitched on Wilson based or the on front that office reporting. or somebody in the building, right? Somebody snitched on Wilson and, yeah. and you know, just an ugly situation. It's terrible. I mean, I mean this is one thing, you know, look, I, I love Robert Tall. I think he's a fantastic man and he's, he has been put in a, in, a, in a very bad spot because the organization sold out for Aaron Rodgers and he got hurt. Like right. no one, no one saw this coming. And so now when this reporting happened that, you know, Zach Wilson was reluctant to play. I'm like, tell me a time when a player has really had an option to say, I really don't want to right. go back in there and not get cut. Right. That was what was up there. The Robert Sala says, we will cut you or suspend you without pay and basically shame you to where no other team is going to want to touch you to make you look like a quitter, or you're going to come back in and start because we need you right now. We know we've yo yo you back and forth, whatever. So it was just multifaceted dysfunction with this. Either Zach Wilson just comes off looking as somebody completely ungrateful, spoiled, and doesn't want to play, or he comes off as looking, he has every right to feel this way. But at the same time, you're getting paid handsomely. You have to go out and do your job. You think Garrett Wilson, some of these guys want to be out there? We see Jonathan Allen with the with the commanders be like, geez, it sucks going back out there and getting our mm. butt kicked every week. But they are in a profession. 
that they get, they're compensated for, most people very handsomely, and a bunch of people would love to have their pain, their dysfunction, so go out there and do it. It does feel like for, you know, the season started with such hope. I've never seen Dan kind of feel that way about sure. his Jets, and it obviously quickly fell off a cliff, but now the team feels, it feels like last year where there's just fractures, and it, I don't like the fact that, yeah, I don't like what Zach Wilson I don't like where he's coming from, not wanting just to go play like anyone should. But if you go and tell a teammate or you seek advice or counsel, you are a young player. Again, I feel like a lot of Zach Wilson that said feels, over the- That also sounds like spin. I feel like for it to be as widespread as it was, it was like, well, people knew it. Yeah, I it, think you're right. But it it's, it's not, if it was a teammate or something like that, and then a person went and just told right. someone else right away, I, it just sort of speaks to like, the whole thing is falling apart in such ugly fashion. They don't want to yeah. play. You know? A lot of these players, you know, especially skilled players, They've been done with Zach for a year now. Yeah. Yep. So you could kind of see why it would get out, but it's also, it's like, it does show. To, and, you know, I, I was saying Rogers, what has he actually done for my team so far? So I have frustration with him, but he's right. It's like, if you want to actually be a, a, an organization that has it together, the first thing you got to do is stop leaking things to the media and creating more of a circus. <laughs> clean up everything. There's so much to just that clean thought the Rogers leaked it. Well, and, and real quick, I'll tell you this. Two teams that were on the same Disorganization, dysfunctional organization track that have tightened it up are the Browns in some ways and the Dolphins. These were two absolutely disastrous franchises. They've got leadership in there that buttoned up the leaks. Hmm. They parked the clown car away. Hmm. Yeah. And it can no longer be found. That cannot be said about the Jets right now. And it's, look, no one talks about it, but the Giants are actually a more disastrous football team, talent wise and things right. like this. Same record. But the Jets just outshine them in absolute absurdity yes. in the oh, same market. Never mind. Yes, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> they outshine them in absurdity, <laughs> so that so that the Giants get overlooked for yeah. all the all the bad stuff that's happening there. And you can't fix stupid. We do this every. We do this. I, I do this every December where I hit this frustration level, and then I also have to think to myself, but the Rogers thing had so much. The injury blew up everything. Oh yeah. So just kind of, I'm trying to like take a step back emotional on the show the other day this is a lost season <laughs> and let's see what happens this winter this is your place to be emotional Rogers also not, not practicing wednesday and good it doesn't seem like there's everybody take a deep breath that probably was never happening take a step back yeah it's time to wipe this season away and see if they could fix things next year again. all right again and again and again finally in the news uh my favorite coach mike mccarthy uh, he had appendix surgery or has that coming up uh, after experiencing ab abdominal pain Wednesday morning. Uh, as a result, he is going to be, you know, in a hospital and getting a procedure done. And the hope, the hope and the plan is uh, that he will be coaching Sunday night against the division rival Philadelphia Eagles. Hmm. Well, I mean, appendicitis is not going to knock Zaddy out of the picture. Oh, Zaddy, what's <laughs> wrong with your insides? <laughs> What? I like it. <laughs> well, it, well, if you must know, Frags, it's a, it was an ad <laughs> abdominal pain, and it's appendicitis. So, there you go. Get well soon, Zaddy. Oh, jeez. There are going to be kids listening to this. <laughs> That's what's happening in the news. <laughs> Do you have anything to add? It was How not. You top that. Yeah, you can't. That You got to leave it with. With frag. You don't want to be the next person and to speak after she speaks. Yeah, and play by play terms. Just let it breathe. Exactly. Um, all right, let us take a break and then we'll get into everything else. <laughs> it's time for your boy. Joining some heroes. Steve what? <laughs> I don't even remember this one. Welcome back to Around the NFL. Steven Weiss. There we go. Does anybody call you Steven Weiss? Mom? My wife, my mother. Oh. <laughs> like when they're mad at you? Yeah, so say Steven might be. Steven. You know, how hard are there? It depends. Yeah. Um, well, it's a fluid situation. It could be like Steven or it could be like Steven. Ooh. <laughs> well, you know that's saying? true, too. Bring Frags back in here. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, with Steve Weiss with us, it's. I thought this is a, a perfect time to bring back one of the war horses uh, segments for around the NFL. It's been a while. We've done it on the live show a couple times, but not. Yeah. it's been a while since it's been in the studio. Hit it, Robbie. 
Live from Inglewood, California, it's time for everybody's favorite game show, What's More Likely? All right, yes, What's More Likely, a game where we present two realities in the NFL, and it's simple. I mean, which one is more likely to be uh, what occurs? And, and, and I, I kept mine in the regular season, but it's anywhere you want to go with it. Steve, you are a guest, so I defer to you to get us going. Oh, I got no, this is a, This is a 2024 off season. More likely. Okay. All right. More yeah. likely the Jets pass on a quarterback mm. with their top draft choice mm. or Robert Sala and Joe Douglas will be the ones making that decision whether to pass or draft. What's more likely? Oh, that's a tough one. I I thought I thought on our last show that Sala, it was kind of the end of the road for Sala, uh, because I thought based on the it was kind of the wonky reporting. It was just a sloppy day that Wilson had told him he didn't want to play and was kind of, you know, putting Sala out directly like that. I don't think that's what happened now that we have more clarity. But I still think if they lose out, I think I I got a feeling that Woody is going to potentially act off that. So. Um, that said, if they have a top five pick, they got to take a quarterback, right? This is a tough. I don't think so. I, I, I think it's the quarterbacks 40. I'm going more likely Salah or wait, it's more likely Salah or Douglas are making the pick or not are making the decision whether to use the pick on the quarterback. I guess I'm going to go quarterback then. I don't think either is particularly likely. I, I think either Salah or Douglas or both will be gone if I have to guess. But I actually think Aaron Rodgers being there, I guess it depends. I'm thinking first round. If Aaron Rodgers is there, he's not going anywhere. Right. They're all in. They're still all in. They are. And he answered the question about the coaches a little more noncommittal to Pat McAfee this week than I maybe would have expected. It wasn't. It wasn't anything noteworthy, but it wasn't like a full throated. I'm the boss. They better be here. It was kind of like that's out of my hands. And. to me, he's there, so you're not taking a first-round quarterback. Uh, maybe you take a developmental guy later. I tend to think uh, the latter, that Sala and Douglas will be making the decision. The reason I think they'd stick around, um, well, they look like a disaster to all of us on the outside. I don't know what, what the owner thinks on the inside. There's been so much change there. It's like the fly in the ointment is with Aaron Rodgers um, attached to Nathaniel Hackett, attached to big chunks of the rock, like certain wide receivers that are there. It's like if you want to keep Aaron Rodgers happy over the offseason, which was a chore for the Packers. Um, do you want it? It's, it's, it looks bad right now, but if a, if a whole new org comes in and blows a lot up and says, we'll build around Aaron Rodgers, but forget Nathaniel Hackett, forget all his buddies. I don't know if that's what you do with one more year of Rodgers. Do you try to say Salah's defense has been good? The thing he was brought in to do, he's done a pretty good job with. Do you give it one more try? Well, he's brought in to be the head coach. That's part of the problem. Like he's right. He needs to be more. Uh, they need to be more globally successful at this point. After three years, I'll say it's more likely. All they have to do is like fall into one or two wins, and I think that will give Johnson enough to say, "All right, just wipe this pass, wipe this whole thing." They lose out. I think everyone's gone. Well, here's why I think Sal and Douglas are back. Who's going to take that job knowing that you got Aaron Rodgers for one year? And well, you're not taking a quarterback to build on. Yeah, well, you could also spin it. One. You know, you got Aaron Rodgers in a, a very good defense. There's, there's ways to. Again, who's going to take that job for one year? A lot of job openings, too. Yes. We'll get to that a little bit later yep. in the show. Um, all right. Here's another one. Uh, what's more likely? The Kansas City Chiefs uh, get the number one seed in the AFC. And they've gotten it how many years in a row now? Five. Five in a row. Patrick Mahomes has played very few road games in his, his life. Zero yep. postseason games, I believe. What about the New England AFC title game? That was in Kansas City. Yeah. That was in Kansas City. Wow. Yeah. He's not never played on the road to the playoffs. Yep. So the Chiefs get the number one seed to keep that streak intact for Mahomes. Or the struggling, struggling Kansas City offense does not score more than 31 points the rest of this season. Mm. What's more likely? 31 points in a game versus mm-hmm. total. That would be a real problem. <laughs> that would, <laughs> okay. They would not that make would, the playoffs. The Patriots yeah. uh, would challenge you on that one. I'll I'll jump in and say it's it's more likely they don't score 31 points. Just because they have the Bills this week, and maybe I'm projecting too hard. I think that's a tough game for them. I've been high on the Bills making a stretch run. That would get them to five losses. At that point, the Ravens and the Dolphins, but I'm thinking especially the Ravens are, are in pretty good 
shape. I think that I just haven't seen a team, and I know they scored 31 against the Raiders. They did it against the Chargers. They did it against the Bears. So it's happened three times this season. They have some pretty um, easy matchups at the end of the season. Raiders, Bengals, Chargers, and they might be needing to play. So those are pretty bad defenses. It's close, but I'm going to go more likely they don't get the one seed. Okay. Hmm. That's tough, though. I... I just believe that they're going to wind up with the one seed somehow. Uh, I look at the other games, though. They've scored in the last five, like 9, 17, 19, and 21. Um, I don't see their offense, like, figuring this out just because there's five more games. Like, we're the part, part, the part of the year where it's like they kind of do what they do well um, and what they don't do well, I don't know how you fix it with the personnel not changing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they get to 31. I think the AFC goes to Florida, either Miami or Jacksonville. Whoa. Um, yeah, I mean, look at the Dolphins' schedule. They should they should click off another three before things get really nitty gritty. Raven schedules a murderer's row, mm-hmm. um, and, and so I think they get to thirty one. I think they have a couple big games, and also checking the previous thirty one. I think there were some defensive scores in there too. I think the question was the Chiefs' offense, mm. but I still think the Chiefs' offense ends up getting a thirty one. They will not get the number one seed. Mm-hmm. Although I, I am looking at the tiebreakers, which is a point in the Chiefs' favor. Yeah, six they always one. seem to find a way. Yeah, don't they? six yeah. and yeah. one in the conference, so they've had three losses, and they beat Miami. The NFC North, That's and they beat Miami, and they beat Jacksonville head to head. Right, and they have the head to head win. So I maybe already would change my answer if it's too late. Well, I need an official <laughs> answer now. <laughs> now I'm going to go over 31 points. As well. All right, Greg, you're up. Okay, I will look at the MVP award and say. A non-quarterback wins the MVP or Hmm. the Bengals make the playoffs. What's more likely? I I think it's more likely, and we should cross-check these before the show because something similar will be coming up, but I think it's more likely the Bengals uh, will make the playoffs. I I will not be pivoting. I wrote this in a Think on the fly. (laughs) We're, you know. Performers. I did it my way. You'll see. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Well, Cincinnati six and six. Uh, they are obviously in the mix from that standpoint. So Ten, tenth right now. Tenth right now. They win the tiebreaker over Buffalo based on head-to-head win percentage. Uh, right now, Denver is ahead of them. Houston's ahead of them. Indy's ahead of them. Cleveland's ahead of them. Hmm. They're two and six. They get the to play a bunch of those teams. Yeah, Pittsburgh's but look, ahead. But again, you're, you're you're looking at this rationale versus yeah. what the other more likely scenario. Is. Right. So the but, other one. But is I'm saying all these teams <laughs> I'm mentioning don't they don't frighten me in like no. oh how are they going to j- hopscotch past them? I think this is more likely, uh, and I don't want to you know sniff too much of the uh, Jake Brown and glue right now. But uh, that was a fun watch, and I'd like to see where that goes. And uh, yeah, Tyreek, CMC. Probably those two guys. Those are the two guys. I th- I just think a quarterback's going to take that, whether it's Brock or Tua or whomever. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's more likely Cincinnati finds a way. Yeah, more likely the Bengals get in. They're not going to give the MVP to a non-quarterback. It's just not Wait, you keep, yeah. People keep saying that as if they are not the people that are deciding. <laughs> so it's not. let's it's, decide it's not, it. We're the people. Greg, Greg why, why do you think there's an offensive player of the year? To give it to the non-quarterback. Why I get it, but I keep hearing that, but it's from the people that, like, Essentially, that decided because also all these people. These are like if, if we, <laughs> and by I mean the media, like they kind of we kind of decide on some level. It becomes consensus. If if people are just stumping for right. it, then it'll it can happen. Us because Bob Glaber wouldn't let us into the uh, Pro Football Writers. Well, I get it yeah. though, but he, I I think was, it's yeah. he was the people but that yeah. have <laughs> microphones, people on on shows <laughs> as influential as this uh, one, and people as influential as you. Well, I mean, do. look, if Tyreek Hill goes over two thousand, we're like, wow, that's never happened before. But he wouldn't got two thousand without Tua. So Tua is the MVP. That's just mm. how it's just it's just how it goes. Because there are definitely people, non quarterbacks, who should have been MVPs before. Because some people were arguing, how can you be an MVP if you're not the best player on your team? I think well, that's legit. Mm. Well, yeah, it, is it though? I mean, who are some of the people who've won it? I guarantee you, right now, is D- if Dak Prescott wins MVP, is he the best player on their team? This year, yeah. No, he's not. Michael Parsons is the best. Well, but that's. Team. I think he's the most that, that, valuable. Yeah, see, now, now you're throwing. Yes. He's the most valuable person on the Cowboys, though. Dak Prescott. That would. Well, every think. quarterback is. Tyreek Hill this that's, year. That's the that's the argument that no like non quarterback is going to win it. Yeah. But the, I was about to say then you know, that's yeah. why then that's why the quarterback yeah. is going to win the award, uh, even if the Bengals finish tenth. It is a unique <laughs> year that there aren't any totally crazy quarterback seasons that. You know, are are which I'm loving people away, but maybe it ends up being Dak. I I think 
I think that's more. He's like fourth or fifth right now, and McCaffrey's like seventh. I think they, they're not way to get the people too talking, far off. Greg. By the way, <laughs> good one. Yards per route yes. run, which is kind of a, a weird stat, but yards per route run. Yes. Like, how many yards do you get every time you just go out for a route? Right. Tyreek Hill this year is about four and a quarter yards per route run. That is more than a yard. So that's like 25. It's more than a yard better than any wide receiver in the last decade. And basically more than a yard better than any wide receiver ever. Only, I mean, I mean like in the last like 20 but, years. But, and, and the next closest people, by the way, are Tyreek Hill, like last year. Like, but still, like he's this year, of his season is that far ahead in terms of like efficiency of him on the field and like I, it does it I feel like every time I'm watching Tyreek Hill catch the ball he's 25 to 30 yards downfield yeah. frying a secondary <laughs> yeah. personnel one of the smartest personnel moves that any player made in the last decade is Tyreek saying I'm not going to the Jets I want to go to the Dolphins <laughs> and I don't know if Mike McDaniel is there yet or it might have been maybe but uh that couldn't have worked out better for him in all ways uh all right Mark this will be a study in relativism because there is a similar concept here, but uh, let's let's just go with it. Um, Jake Browning, what's more likely? Jake Browning goes Brock Purdy on our ass and in nothing short of a visual feast on the gridiron, unfurls four wins down the stretch, falling in a, in a thriller to the Chiefs. They don't get that one. Right. But executing backup on backup crime in wins over Minshew's Colts, Josh D's Vikings, Trubisky's Steelers, and Flacco's Browns. Okay. He goes 10-7 and seven and prance into the wild card. Uh, or before he is named coach of the year, Demeco Ryan's and his star pupil C.J. Stroud take out the Ravens and Dolphins in January before facing the Chiefs in the AFC title tilt. TBD on that result, but the world becomes attuned to the unusual skill set of former PFF numbers bod turned play calling wizard Bobby Slowick, who arm in arm with Ryan's wins assistant coach of the year. Stroud, no shocker, wins offensive rookie <laughs> of the year, and the three immediately buy a string of Houston based Ford dealerships to funnel passive income into their checking accounts for years to come. Stroud also becomes the new face of a Dell computer ad campaign attempting to tell the nation, hey guys, <laughs> desktop computers are cool again. Clear off that oak desk and plant one of our three foot by two foot hulking technology centers where that QuickBook used to be. In the ad, Stroud comes across as a capable and easy to believe thespian. Mm. Think. What's more likely? I'm going A just because CJ Stroud. You can't go to Dell because it's a Microsoft league. <laughs> good point. See, Steve just knows these things. I mean, I'm just I saying. Think you just nailed, yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, look, you you know, you put a whole bunch of of you know addendums on there, which which nicks out the latter scenario. Right. Well, if it was yeah, just call. Texans making the conference title <laughs> game, uh, compared to the Bengals winning four straight and then making the playoffs at ten and seven. I mean, you could base it there if you'd like. They were very well. I'm, I can't okay. because you read a lot of specific <laughs> things that I I personally don't think. I mean, even if the desk is not oak. Right. It all it's falls over. apart. Yeah. It, it all falls apart. That is a problem. I would say this, though. Like, coach of the year, assistant coach of the year for what he's done with Stroud and Bobby Sloak and Stroud winning what he should win. Like, it, if not MVP, at some on some level he keeps going, but offensive rookie of the year or player. Um, this does. Uh, this is my principle that all segments with Sessler all end up in the same exact place. There's like a... <laughs> everything kind of just funnels <laughs> to the same spot every time. Um, I... I do like this is your new thing. You're, the the Texans are your team. They're not going to win the division. They're going to win a playoff game. Good luck to you. I hope it works out. I, I think, think that's they, more likely yeah, than the Bengals. Wanna... Yeah, winning four out of five, which which also could happen. But the the Texans. Yeah, we can't get is, too sucked in by the Browning right. thing. It was one game. This is a weak year. I I'm. It's reminding me more and more. I keep thinking of of 2011, which I always think about. That there were no good teams in 2011. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, by the time you got to the playoffs. And I don't think we're there because the 49ers are great. Cowboys are great. But in the AFC, we'll see how it all shakes out. Like, you could see a surprising team in the ch AFC championship game. Sure. It would not be crazy. Yep. Sure. I see you trying to minimize that second Giants title. I see what you do. I did multiple shows in a row. He's yeah. I point. It's what not the catch. Giants. Yeah. I said it off camera, I believe. You've said that it was, many times. I've let it pass each time. No. But now that you've said it for the third time no, in no, about no, no, a week. No. The... <laughs> The, that was one of the worst Patriots teams of the Belichick era, and they were like a drive away from winning the Super Bowl. People, and it was a huge disappointment, but that was a bad, bad Patriots team. One of the worst defenses in the league, and they were like a drive away from winning the Super Bowl. Okay. Some years don't Just have saying. dominant teams. Oh, there were no good teams. So that must mean the team that won the Super Bowl actually wasn't that good that year. 
Well, they you did got go your like, point. You, you, you got him. They did go like nine and seven. Another zinger from Rosenthal. They also became better and better, though, as the, their pass yeah. rush by the soup. You know, by, they were the worst rushing team, I think, in the league, too. Steve, back they, to they you. Were, they were outscored yeah. that season. I think it's fair to say they weren't like a dominant okay. team. <laughs> I mean, it, they, weren't, they weren't an all-time great team, but that yeah. was they had a great run. It was a fun Super Bowl. I, I enjoyed the playoffs. A lot of good games. Well, Wait. save for the 2011 podcast. Can you imagine <laughs> living with me? 32nd, I think, in DVOA defensively, the Patriots that year. Were we even using that metric back then? I was. Okay. Hey, now. <laughs> I think they go, they go back in time with it, too. They, you know. All right, Steve, next one. Well, this dovetails beautifully into okay, my nice. next one. More likely, Bill Belichick retires because so few teams pursue him oh, wow. in the offseason to be their head coach. Whoa. Or. Mac Jones remains in New England in 2024 as their quarterback. Oh, man. What? Jeez. I mean, <laughs> Steve. Does he, that was a good one. Does he have to start Mac Jones or is he that, he's that, on the that, team? There's no, there's no starter. He's on okay. the team. I'll go Mac Jones then. Yeah, I find it. I would find it almost impossible to think. And sometimes, you know, fans and analysts and people on the outside aren't seeing what's really going on inside the league that maybe there wouldn't be a big market for Belichick, but the idea that he would almost be blackballed out of the league. No, no, no. I, I didn't see blackball. Honest to God. Do you think there are going to be teams lining up? Do you think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I think absolutely. Or, there's an owner out there or six that would say, wait, I would love to have Bill Belichick running my team. Right well, explain this facial expression. Steve is making. I know, no, you I, brought well, this well, one up. What's we'll going go on, Steve? Oh, no, there was, there's was definitely an ulterior motive behind this. Come one. on, Steve. I think give we're going to have as many openings um, from the coaching angle as we've had in a long time. It just feels like we're, we're heading there. But I do wonder, because like every like Belichick biography talks about how it was drilled into his mind and heart in Cleveland that the ownership matters so, so much. So like Correct. some of these teams that are out there that might want him, he may not want in reverse. The only thing is there is that Don Shula record sitting out there. Yeah, you know, and I know people say he wants it like this, but does he want it that bad to kind of go through? Because first off, if you've seen how great he's developed quarterbacks Mm. in the past couple years, why would a team like Carolina want him? You're stuck with Bryce Young, right? Okay, so then, all right, um, Tampa, they're going to go through a cap cleansing. They're going to have to get a – like – are you going to bring up maybe like that, that's one of the few teams, but of all of these other things, I think the fact that you said, Mark, have that a ownership is huge to him. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to want the chargers job. And that's where like Ben Johnson or someone's going to come coach this quarterback. Again, that's what I think guys like Ben Johnson, believe it or not, Dan Quinn, there's going to be some defensive coaches, guys like Dan Quinn. They are going to be on shorter list than Bill Belichick. Mm. So that's why I think this to me, is the bigger story, not how the parting is going to happen, but how many teams actually are going to give him a call saying, do you want to come be our coach? I, I think there'd be more teams saying, come be our, our director of football operations. And I could see a team like the Giants doing that, especially since they take his advice so much, some of their coach hirings and other hirings. Come, mm. come run our overall operation. That's his roots. Right, instead of being the head coach. Well, and he has a longtime assistant is coaching the team. Yeah. They always sort of forget about with the Belichick tree that Dave was there for like 14 years. Yeah. And, you know, I think he, Belichick and Parcells' careers are so intertwined. That's what Parcells did at the end. He was off the sideline and, and running from upstairs as well. I could see that. But I also, he's such a, like, Belichick's such a student and a lover of the sport. Like, having the opportunity to have that number one. So was Don Shula. Like, how many people came after Don Shula? Right. I, so was Tom Landry. Belichick will yep. require. In ownership, humbling himself a little bit, which is not always easy for ownership to do, and possibly clearing out the entire front office structure that exists. And that's hard. That's a pain in the butt. Maybe people don't want to do that. Just And I can't quite imagine Belichick's like, oh, yeah, I'll go work for, you know, Scott Fitter. It's like, that's, that's not happening. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, all right, here we go. M- what's more likely? I don't know. This one, we'll see. We'll see what you guys say about this one. What's more likely? The Green Bay Packers. Mark's ears perked up. Steal the NFC North or Whoa. the Buffalo Bills steal the AFC East? Whoa. What's more likely? Bills. Why? I, I just believe that 
we haven't seen. What if we just I, moved on? No, I've been because I don't. I think it's kind of self-explanatory. The answer is like they've been doing this for years, and like you'd need the Dolphins to kind of collapse. Obviously, they play Week 18. They play right. Week 18. I, I, the yeah, Bills yeah. beat the Dolphins 48-20, so they would clinch the head-to-head if they beat them Week 18. So that They're means they just got to tie them. They got to get to within one. They just have then. to tie them in the standings, and right. they would win three if they is, win Week three 18. Three up is rich. Um, but I do feel like we're going to get another version of the Bills. So I've been very down on. Um, out of this buy in this whole How about situation? Detroit? They may be a little more vulnerable than we could have thought a month ago. Uh, and uh, the Packers heating up. I, could I mean, they're see also getting tight. They're also th- separated by three games. So, right. you, you know, I, I, I would see, I would see the Packers making the run because they're starting to play in all facets, especially defensively. Great situation of football. Jordan love looks real. Um, I don't think the Lions will collapse. I think they're getting ready to regather. But I just think Miami's just going to go ahead and click off, you know, the rest of the way. They may lose once. Um, it would be a pretty huge collapse. Well, they have uh, yeah. Titans-Jets the next two weeks, Correct. which, you know, you they're going to be heavy favorites. But then they have Cowboys-Ravens. Yeah. And, and their Bills in this scenario would have to run the table. They would have to win every game. I think they're capable of it, but at Dallas, home for Cowboys – that's that's tough. What if and they split those Chargers. games they, they and then went four, out? Four out of Probably five. not. They play four out of five at home. They would need, and you better believe they are going to, they are going to be playing for home field advantage. Right. They the do Dolphins not want to go anywhere else. It, unless the Bills went out, the Dolphins would have to stub their toe against the Jets or the Titans and lose their hard games. They'd have to lose three out of four before even facing the Bills. They, they, they've it's they've possible. done that a few it's been times a weird this year. year. It's, it's been, been a weird, weird year. year. I think the likelihood of one of these things happening is is probably greater than than people. Think I don't have a, a hot take on either, I, but to me the lions are a little more crickety. Uh, is that a word? Uh, so I'm gonna go. Rickety? That's more like a rickety. Yeah. yeah, just like the foundation is. Yeah, a little the rickety. Okay, their rickety. defense. Their defense is not. Big. Yeah, like they they were quite like. Yeah, you know, when was the last time they played a good defensive game? Like, it's it's been weeks. <laughs> it's like it's seven like or a eight weeks. Mark, it's like it a fortress cut. that's on like wooden planks, like uh, you know. Rickety. At the base, yeah, it's like I know it what ri- I know on, on a beach. I know what rickety yeah. means, but like, uh, is that the I don't know? Is that the Lions? Lions? I, I mean, know I know you were you went crickety, so it's it, <laughs> yeah. I, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Ter- but termite. Yeah. <laughs> termite. You get you get blown <laughs> out. You get the doors blown off you by the Ravens. You you have to win on the last possession against the Chargers. You know you have to win on the last second against the Bears. Same thing against the Saints. I mean, these are not great teams, so it's just a little rickety. Yeah, Saints right. can't rickety. Support. Greggy. Uh, this one's pretty simple. Kyler Murray is the Cardinals quarterback next year or a rookie quarterback uh, is the Cardinals quarterback. What's more likely? Yeah, I thought that these, you know, it's they're, they're genuinely looking at Kyler Murray as like from with new fresh eyes. You've got all new people there and they, they've done it quietly like the tank beyond the tanking thing this year. They already like accrued a bunch of draft picks in the previous draft. I always thought they were like, no matter what happened with this season, they were in good position to leverage those to get the quarterback that they want. Um, I think new coach, would, new quarterback buys you time, buys you years. Like new coach attached to a Kyler Murray experience that's always been kind of up and down and weird um, is a little more perilous. You could get assets for him. I think he's very tradable. Mm. And I think they're going to go rookie. I think it's like, let's we're starting this experience over. I put Kyler in the same category, Steve, as Justin Fields, where... They have maybe some control of their fate, but they are going to have to ball out to end the season and change some minds in that building. I think it's more likely he does, though, get traded uh, and they start over. Mm. I think it's more likely Kyler's back. I mean, everything I've heard is that him and the OC really get along. They, they've kind of designed some things. And look at Kyler Murray's win-loss record. When he's on the field, he wins ball games. Two and two this year. Yeah, I mean, he, he wins ball games. So I think it could be a situation to buy them more time to say, let's get other pieces around him. We've got one more full year to evaluate Kyler, but if we've got to move off, move off of him after 2024, we at least have pieces around him where we can go out into free agency or something or trade up and get a quarterback because now we've got all the other pieces we need or more of the pieces that we need to be competitive. It right. is like it's telling that they, you know, with very clear eyes and, and comments said, He's going to come back and play this season. We're going to get a look at him versus, you know, some sort of phony thing where, oh, we're not sure he's ready and he's quietly d- never appeared. The contract is, makes it trickier to trade. So I, I right. think it's, 
Uh, I'll be talking about him a little on NFL Plus this Thursday in our game. Oh, yeah. Check it out. I, I think the way he's playing, he's cementing his spot. There I agree. Because he's just playing too well that they're not going to want to deal with the what's behind door number two. And oh, by the way, it's a great receiver draft. Maybe you have the third pick. Maybe you get Marvin Harris Jr. Like <laughs> yeah. you could give him a nice weapon. Yeah. All right. Last one, Mark. Okay. Uh, all right. A, this is a three-parter and it's not as long as the other one. I'm not going to make you sit here for four minutes. Um, <laughs> a, the Super Bowl features a backup quarterback. Okay. okay. Not a, not a person you went in okay. thinking which starter. That's okay. Up. There's okay. a lot of that going on. Um, or uh, either one of two people, Dan or Mark, pass away from oh. what the NFL reports as natural causes while sitting through Steelers Patriots on Thursday night. Um, or Dan Mark die. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, or pros pro reporter and noted wine connoisseur, Steve oh. Weiss, oh, yeah. this off season announces the unveiling of his own handcrafted oh, Pinot Noir. It's coming. Yeah. A zesty rich blend of Northern Californian grapes. Uh, wine drinkers go utterly bonkers for this new offering entitled first and drunk. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I think Steve and his wife are a little bit too classy to have drunk in the title. I thought about that, but I think yeah. it, it, it's a marketplace. I mean, you when you go <laughs> look for wine and you're with like some friends, you kind of it's the label, it's the name, and you like you try that at least. It's Steve, you know, holding yeah. a football on the cover. Yeah, if we're drunk, we could sell it in you know your your corner market stores, some bodegas around. You know, if we're putting drunk on there. And by the way, I'd be getting the grapes from the Central Valley. That's where the Pinot grapes grow. My mm. see this guy. See, there we go. You know. I challenged I mean, him with I a have, wine concept, and he came right I've back with I've been drunk facts. with Steve and <laughs> yes. D in the past. Yeah, well, we've all been there. We've all been yeah. So I'm not saying they're <laughs> above, <not> <laughs> you know, getting loose and having a good time. Uh, I I think that's the most likely that Steve has some type of wine operation in his future. Ooh. I hope you and I survive Thursday night football. I am concerned, but I, I think that's the least likely. And I think, I think we're it is certainly possible we get a backup in the Super Bowl, but um, I'm holding out hope we're going to get a superpower matchup mm. with healthy stars. I, mean, I guess I'd go back up. Just cause you could also get it, have him injured, like in the playoffs or conference championship. And uh, I just think Steve's at a point in his career. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to be adding jobs right now, do you? I mean, you got a lot going on. Maybe, yeah, there's, maybe, there's too much horticulture and, and yeah. farming that have to just go like on. I just feel yeah. like that's too. But did you much. put a time on this? This could be the you know the next pretty, out of pretty, life. I say this, this, off this off season, and I think it'd be a situation where you're not you know stomping grapes uh, like that news person <laughs> that fell thing. You're like you you're down, you, you'd down, out, down, yeah down. you'd outsource the operation, but it would oh, be well, like your name and your powerful brand. Ooh, all right. Well, so. I mean that that might be possible. I'm still going to go back up quarterback. I still have visions of Nick Foles in my head. Mm. So it could possibly happen. How about Teddy yep. Bridgewater for the Lions Ooh. there in the Super Bowl? Oh. <laughs> Teddy's Ooh. been off the grid this year. Then Dan Mark will well, a lot away. of teams could use a Teddy right about now. The Lions How about did that, that well. They did and that drafted well. They haven't, one. They haven't needed one. And yeah. drafted it's one. It's good right. to have Kinda somebody. Right. That would be a long um, Super Bowl week. <laughs> all right, good stuff. Good. What's more likely? Do we have the grapes lady, by the way, still on the board? I don't think so. Oh we, we had God. grapes lady. What do you mean? I don't think so. Do you? Know I just mean it's been so long, isn't that like seven years? It ago? wasn't actually that long ago. Oh, really? We used it for a segment. I can't remember what it was. It was a grizzly set. It wasn't that long ago, actually. I feel like it was just a couple of years ago. <laughs> no, it was this year. I think. Was it? All right, let's get to that Thursday night football game uh, that Mark and I will be uh, co-helming on um, on around the NFL tomorrow evening. It is the New England Patriots, two and ten. Traveling to Pittsburgh to face the Steelers. Steelers got to have it. Steelers, you know, Steve, uh, as Tomlin's want to do after a really bad game, he comes after the team hard. He puts himself in front of the line. I need to be better, but we were JV. And I just wonder, here's my curiosity, because I almost want the game to be really bad now. Just, oh, me too. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> do, do the Pittsburgh Steelers play down to the level of their opponent with a backup quarterback themselves now, Mitch Trubisky? I could see this one getting real grisly, uh, low scoring, going down to to the wire. Maybe that's giving the Pats too much credit. Yes, it is. Okay. You know, so we were talking about stomping grapes. So let's let's pretend that uh, Tomlin and the Steelers defense is the winemaker. Okay. They are going to be dialing it up to stomp some grapes. Okay. With a, you know Bailey Zappi, you can see a lot of Alex Highsmith, T.J. Watt. It's not going to be kind because. <laughs> The Patriots can't move the ball. <laughs> there, there it is. This poor woman. Happy. Oh, 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 oh
Poor Bailey's hat. <laughs> See, that's no, Steve, you got to outsource the grape. We're going yeah. to outsource yeah. it. No, there will, there will be two defensive scores by Pittsburgh. Mm. It, two. Two defensive Fire scores. Fire up your fantasy Ds. Hey, you know, Mark knows that. The Browns week two. Oh, so it happened. Oh, yes. Yep. So, yes, yes. so it, it, will, it will turn out to be a something sloppy like that. But defensively, I think the Steelers know this is one. And no Ramondre Stevenson, Greg. No. That was the only thing they could that do was, on. Uh, he's tough. got a yeah, high ankle sprain. I don't know if we're going to see them again. Here Zeke, it is, Greg. baby. The last five weeks, uh, Patriots uh, scoring 17, 17. I don't even know if there's a defensive score in here. 17, 17, 6, 7, 0. Right. You, you mentioned the over under All was, was 30. They're, the games that they've played the last three weeks haven't gone over 17. No. Because their defense is playing pretty well. Yeah. Uh, they actually have the number one rush defense in the league in, in terms of yards per carry allowed. So that is what Pittsburgh's best at is running the ball. That's what I'm saying. But offense, and Zappi was an upgrade. Even they, they, it shows you how bad they are that they didn't. They literally didn't score a point. And Zappi was unquestionably oh a little better than than Mac Jones had been. Uh, they had two drives, which really just to me typified where the Patriots are at. A 13 play drive that didn't pass the 30, <laughs> and then an 11 play drive that ended at the 43. That's that is where they are at. Whoa! Uh, it is just. Yeah, I'm going to go Steelers 16, Patriots 11. They cover the They get on the board? Spread. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. I, I mean, I, I think wow. that's how it projects. And so that's them. why it probably will be like 31 or nothing. It's like, I, I would even that's, that's, like, everyone, that's under. That's, that's under that. even. But when I, it's like, the, I mean, the Patriots just are so inept and hard to watch on offense. Like, they've gone 41 straight possessions without a passing touchdown. We're going to get 25 carries from Ezekiel Elliott. It's going to be a lot of Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's going to be a lot a of Alex Highsmith, too. I mean, they've given up 12 sacks to the Patriots in the last three weeks. And, like, right. he's been their more up numbers wise productive Zappy. pass rusher. The one thing he doesn't is get rid of the ball. He just sort of holds he it. He holds ball. it. It's, it's not going to, it's not going to go well. Here, here's, here's the good news, everybody. And again, I said it uh, on Monday and I'll say it again. You're thinking to yourself, I listen to ATN every week, I listen to every episode. But you know what? I'm going to clear my Thursday night plate, my Friday morning plate. I'm not going to listen to the, the recap of that game. No, no, no. Mistake. Because me mistake. and mistake the Cess dog are going to cook something up as an auxiliary seg. As it, long as you survive. Well, that's true. But <laughs> well, that would be, be just design. like sharing memories of <laughs> what the other guy. It's such a flexible operation yeah. that um, early in the week we had come up with what would have been a killer seg. Right. Um, but then the news cycle forced us to talk about some of that in real time when we Rotate. bring the news to them very quickly. So we're just pitching. We're, mm. we're coming up with new ideas now, and we're, you know, we're stopping. The, we're, dr we're drinking the first and drunk wine. Oh, we're doing oh, it. Do, oh. so. All right. Don't, don't blow they this. they got to get Malik Cunningham in the game. Yeah, I, It sounds they, they like he's been play. taking some snaps. Be visible. Uh, don't blow this, Belichick, because <laughs> I, I want that top two pick. And uh, he has, you know, it would be a, a callback performance to some very big, like, owning of Mike Tomlin in this Steelers operation moments, which – dotted uh, much of the 2000s. Belichick's, Belichick's going Lovey Smith, man. He's like, I'm not yeah. making this pick, man. I am not giving them. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, is, he, is, he is trying to get this win. <laughs> um, all right. So check out Thursday Night Football on uh, Amazon Prime. And of course, um, game coverage anchored by Colleen Wolf. Not with us today uh, on NFL Network. Okay, here we go. Before we say goodbye, always fun. Steve's here. It's special. Let's open up the mailbag and, uh, you know, oh, this is going to be great. All right. Uh, producer Eric, who, by the way, producer Eric is more likely to start for the Patriots next season than Mac Jones. I, I feel confident saying that. Yes or no? Well, not more. Well, likely. I, I know I mean, he's missing a large part of one of his fingers, but not his throwing yeah. finger. You just got to spin it with the right hand. It's a good counter. Is it? No, it is your right hand. It is my right hand. Oh, but don't they shit. say it's the um, the index finger that is the important one? Did you know that football? our producer lost part of his thumb in a uh, slicing accident in the kitchen? I didn't. And yeah, has the growth on that, by the way. It's dude. I'm, I was actually having a talk with my wife about it yesterday. It's it's looks Let's pretty see. normal. Yeah, like it looks like it has a little gumby, a little point bit misshapen, to it. but not yeah. Too but bad. did you know that body parts? grow back if they're cut off i didn't know that like, uh, that's this I, has baffled me yeah. from the start i mean i, I didn't i know like you know your liver can regenerate yeah. i didn't if know i took it to the like nub like the knuckle yeah. i'm assuming i wouldn't be like in the same situation but you know i took off a slice and it is the fr i looked at the picture the other day of the actual incident and based off that to this it's night and day it's kind of mm. crazy to be honest any chance you could grow a second thumbnail <laughs> that would be something we'll check back in a couple months i'm holding out hope i'm holding out yeah hope. We could charge for that. 
<laughs> little side, little side <laughs> hustle. All right, let's get to it, Eric. Uh, first question up. All right, this is from uh, Death Metal Minivan. Niners are clearly the best team, but the universe refuses to let Kyle Shannon have nice things. <laughs> so how are they eventually going Ugh. to lose? I, I, I do think the Niners are the best team, but is it, it's a little bit too much to say like, Oh, what could possibly get in the way? You know, there are some really good teams in the NFC alone at, atop that conference. I think for maximum pain, it's a Ravens 49ers Super Bowl rematch. Oh, you're just so that you there. can just like relive because that to me seemed it wouldn't be painful necessarily for Shanahan related to the 49ers, but for the the fan base to have the the same team kind of beat you, maybe it's in the exact same way, you I mean, know, or, where they get down inside the ten yard line late and they throw a few. It, it would be Purdy fresh. Over those it. it would be fresh pain to lose to the Chiefs, which just happened under Shanahan. That's true too. Right. We don't. So they, I think yeah, you get you get there all the way. That's how I see. That would be tough to. I can't deal with that. Can you just picture it's like stone faced Mike Shanahan with that shock of white hair in the luxury suite on the Super Bowl, just looking down at his son, like, do not disappoint me again. I have multiple titles. You need to win one on your own. Like one of those things. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, based on, yeah, if that were this. Can you see that, Steve? Yeah, I I could absolutely (laughs) see it. I could absolutely. The the most painful Uh, ways for Brock Purdy to get hurt again in the NFC Championship. Oh, don't put that energy in the air, Steve. All right, next up. Then we get Sam Darnold starting to see Actually, the ball. The hey, backup wait a quarterbacks. second. Kevin McCarthy asks, who will be the vaunted team no <laughs> one wants to meet in the playoffs from the NFC and AFC this season? So this is a team that is, I guess, to make this work, is right now on the outside looking in, right? Well, yeah. it's just sort of the, I, to me, the Bills pop up as like, you don't they, want they, the Bills a team that has like to get six, hot and like yes. really, really right. catch right. fire. Right, not the number one seed right now. Right. right. Um, I mean, I, I've already. I think it's Texans personally. I think they're going right. to keep just going. One playoff win, you said, maybe more. I, I said two in that in that scenario mm. that they went to the AFC title game. Maybe and I didn't it, even say what would happen in that. And Green, I guess Green Bay would work as the, the Packers would be the, the yeah, Packers I mean, would yep. be the team. I would. You have high level quarterback play. Yeah, yeah. I, a couple of weeks ago, I would have been you know super into the uh, the Vikings in this case. Now we got to see what Dobbs looks like. Yep. But think about this. It's a good call, though. Don't get down too down on the Vikings. I know it's been a rough couple weeks. The team around the NFL is getting Justin Jefferson back, and that is going yeah, to is. maybe be a difference maker. Yeah, and, and they get hot again. And, yeah, the D's so much better with Flores this year. All right, what's next? All right, this is from Hoyt Hans van der Marl. <laughs> Uh, can I nominate Tua to be considered for the Superstar Club debate next summer? At current mm. time, which QB would be considered to take off the list? All right, Steve, I'm going to say I know you have a connection to Tua, um, so I want to tee you up on this one. The Superstar Club, Steve, is uh, an article I put out every summer on NFL.com um, where it's a zero-sum game. If I put someone into the Superstar Club, I have to take someone out. So. Here's who's currently in the Superstar Club if you are going to consider taking, uh, putting uh, two Too in. Okay. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers. Is this based on just like whatever the upcoming season, kind of like how we choose the, the 100 for the, the upcoming year, but we reflect back on what they've done the previous exactly. year? So I take Aaron Rodgers off. Right. Yeah. I take Aaron Rodgers off. It's yeah. kind of easy in a way. But he is such a superstar as he's. You know, made sure to remain throughout. Hey, the after seeing Tua on the Manning cast rock the guitar, mm. right? He's very versatile. Tua is there, a surprising person. Oh, I took out Dak last year. <laughs> Frick. Okay, I got to put Dak in too, so I got to take somebody else. Yeah, out. I don't know if I don't know if can't Dol- take Josh Dolphins out. fans hate it, but I feel like I still need a little more from Tua here down. There. I think the rest of Tua's season will tell for yeah. a story superstar a lot. club yeah. okay. for superstar because his his wide receiver is. Kind of the superstar. Oh, you're and his put, coach. You're putting him in the Brock Purdy category. No, Ooh. no. But it, it, who? Which name am I taking out? Yeah, Rodgers would be a good one. But I would maybe put Dak. If Dak ended up winning, yeah. MVP. if who Dak knows? takes Dak Rogers, no five. shame in that one. No right. shame in that one. And I don't, I don't throw it out there. I know nobody wants to even talk about this. I know. I know. Well, yeah, Herbert. I mean, I think it's yeah. It's like it's yeah. been a the, the like we're the talking shine the superstars this time. I mean, he's the one yeah. in the he's got commercials. He's got TV commercials. Just got that ma- magnetic subway. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. He could have left it's it's in TV. He's in TV commercials. It's not his personal <laughs> skills that have like 
change this year, though. I think it's just he's in a mess. It's, it's almost I, yeah. show. It's time to show. Yeah. It and I, I think this 12 inch foot long is going to be delicious. <laughs> they know where you're going with that. All right. Next up. <laughs> All right. Eric Blazel. I think I got that right. What do you think, Mark? Blazel? Blazel. Eric, Eric, let us know. Who was the most under the radar wiki <laughs> off season free agency signing? I like this one a lot. It's Greggy, this is your world because you do the top 101. Who is the one that kind of maybe you had lower in the list and then ended up being a star this year? Who is it? I, I went back to look at the list. Wiki uh, Man, that top 20 is terrible compared to like 20 through 50. Oh. How about Bobby Okariki? Okay. I don't know yeah. if we've said Okariki. his name. Okariki. Okariki. Uh, we haven't said his name much on this program, but he has been dynamite. We mentioned has he been uh, wiki Ebenezer or uh, maybe the answer no, but... yeah. for the Colts has been great. They all have to be very difficult yeah. names. Yeah. Also, yeah. Zach <laughs> Allen for the Broncos. Although go. I had him, I had him That's ranked quite call. high, but he doesn't get a lot of pop, and he's been fantastic. I mean, to be it? fair, Travolta didn't know how to say. That woman's it name, so that's it, 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 it fits with the first the one two. In the like only so. Nadel Azim. <laughs> uh, all right, what's next? Jesse Bates, by the way. That's Ooh, a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. one. Kaiser White, go. like T.J. Edwards, Arden Key. Parker Stewart asks, "Hey Dan, new dad here. Thoughts on kids growing up as fans <laughs> of their parents' team? I'm a Packer fan, but I live around D.C. Is it cool slash fair slash acceptable to make the kid follow suit with no other connection? Thanks." Uh, is he like the Orioles or the Nationals or? Yeah. So <laughs> I'll, I can only tell you what I did um, because I'm obviously a New York uh, transplant here in L.A. And I I did not push the Jets um, on them at all because I knew, first of all, the Jets are a very difficult fan experience. And two, if all their friends are fans of, uh, you know, a local team, I'm not going to take that away from them. So my eldest son and, you know, the dad juice is still powerful. So it's like they're, they're going to be what is dad like my eldest son. I would say he's kind of a Jets fan. Uh, my youngest son has gravitated toward the Chargers, another pain franchise. And they're also building a facility nearby, nearby to where I live. So like I'm like, uh, OK, with that. And they have a franchise quarterback. Maybe he's a superstar. Maybe he's not. Um, so let them do their own thing. And that's how I've played this, because if you try to force it, bad news. Right. My initial thought reading this question is kids are have their own minds like you can't make no your children necessarily do anything. You can try to mold you them if tr- you wish. It's not the healthy you can move tr- to do. You can try, yeah. but it might not be successful. And more importantly, like every kid is different. Like some kids. Yeah, they they're they might be down with that. Some they're going to have their own thoughts. And then it also could change like what they like at eight might be very different from what they like at 12 because of because of a lot of things like they, they're going to have their own opinions. My daughter is diehard Rams and my son is more with the Patriots with me and kind of like you know, comes and goes or whatever. But they're kind of going to do what they want to do. I feel like M- my dad let he didn't never put he was a Giants fan, but he never pushed the Giants on me. We watched a lot of Giants games together and it was just kind of like the doing that with your dad was awesome. Um, but I wouldn't be here if I hadn't gone and picked the Browns back then, a lot of what happened there turned me into, turned me on to like writing and journalism and the story of those teams and everything else. It's like, so I think you've got to not get in the way of the destiny of your child, whatever it is. Um, yeah. You know, let yeah, them, my, let them like Walker is a fan of Scott Hansen and red zone. That's and his fantasy team. That like, which is yeah. like a lot of kids. That's, that's his biggest team. Yeah. My oldest son, you know, he, I told him, Hey, when I was a kid, I loved the Vikings and I lived in Minnesota. And so, He's decided like the Vikings, but my other two kids, since most of their lives are in Atlanta, they love the Falcons. They love the Atlanta Hawks. But the one thing I do not allow, I do not allow Greg, pardon me. There we go. Any Celtics fandom in the house. Mm. Oh. It is not yes. allowed. I think that is not cheer for the Celtics. You can go outside, but in the crib, not happy. I like that. I, can, I think there are things that you'd <laughs> that's, say that's that won't be one. part of our family. You can't like be a Red Sox or, fan you know, of my house. Right. Yeah, you, that, yeah, yeah I, can't. I pretty much cut the, put the kibosh on Lakers. That was the only thing I really <laughs> yeah. I put down. But it's funny, like, that kind of is in opposition of everything we were just saying. Right. But there's it some teams that are just work. not. No, it's off it's like limits. Off yeah. limits. You cannot have it. It does not work. All right. What else? Brandon Laurie. I if, love this if question. If the NFL started a franchise overseas next season, who would he uh, who would he think would make the best head coach for an international audience? Steve, take this one. Come on, guys. There, there's only one answer to this, and he's not coaching in the NFL right now. There you go. He's coaching at Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin. What? <laughs> How much of a superstar? <laughs> I'm going Ted Lasso here. I'm okay, going complete. Okay. 
what? super handsome what? guy what? Yeah, what? who doesn't what? care what he says what? or tweets. He's overseas, so he can stick shots guy? at everybody. Okay. He would completely engage with right. the international audience. We know he's, you know, he will up and leave whatever. Lane Kiffin. Mm. That is a That's, wild one. That would be you know what he is? so spectacular. Which I think would pop is he's like uber American. He is the, the best and the worst of <laughs> yes. what our country has to offer. Like he would he would represent. You know who would have been good too? Uh, no longer with us. Mike Leach would be a good guy yes. to send over there. Leach, he would have yeah, been great. Rest uh, I, think peace, Mike Leach. I think I'd go uber American in the sense of like ship Dan Campbell over there and I'd, he'd be out. You know, he would oh, be a yeah. star. Be good. Scones yeah. and, you know, the, you know who, the, hooligan, the hooliganism would come back. Yeah. <laughs> I thought of, uh, which who knows, maybe he will get a coordinator and a head coaching job someday. Uh, Henry's friend, Aiden uh, Dirty, the defensive line coach of the Cowboys, who's from London. That's right. And uh, is legit, you know, grew up there, played in NFL Europe. And Hometown hero angle, I like Having that. a very successful run here as a position coach right now and move up the ladder. There we go. That's a good one as Had well. Had some hard knocks pop back in the day. All right, a couple more. What do we got? Uh, oh, Steve, Ooh. this is another one I picked for you because uh, you uh, you still working with the Falcons? I am not. I have okay. not worked with them. So now you you could be completely, completely yes. objective. Here we it go. Would have been. Tom Marshall, is it the scheme in Atlanta or is Kyle Pitts just not lived up to the hype? It's both. It's both. Because, look, I mean, we could sit there and say, oh, Falcons, they don't know what to do with Kyle Pitts. Well, he's been targeted 68 times. He has 41 catches, right? That's 27 non-catches. Now, that could be bad throws, uh, part of it. They still haven't figured out how to – fully incorporate him, whereas, oh, you know, Lions get Sam Laporte in as a rookie, and he's like an anchor of their offense, right? They figured that part out. Um, and meanwhile, Johnny Smith has 20 fewer targets and only four fewer catches and one more touchdown than Kyle Pitts. Part of that is on Kyle Pitts, right? He's got he's to do something better to make himself more of an attractive option and make plays when they come his way. So I think that's a dual issue when it comes to Kyle Pitts and the Falcons. And he's years into his career. Correct. I wish I could remember who said it. And he, he's still only 23, which is great. Correct. We'd love to see him with a fresh start. He's one of those else. guys. He's going to be the next Sammy Watkins that you're like, he's still 27. We always joke that Sammy right. Watkins was 27 years old for like seven straight years. Yeah. And I wish I remember who had said this, but I, I looked out for it when they said it, that in this last game, now Pitts is showing some frustration at times. And the thought was to me, he's frustrated about himself that he is not as explosive as he the knee was and things like that. Yeah. Coming out. And I do think if you, if you watch, like he still looks like a great athlete, but is he next level crazy athlete that we sort of thought the unicorn, he was? The unicorn we thought he was going to be. Yeah. I don't know. I mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. Last one. Last one. Here we go. And it comes from faux real. So faux, so real on X. Could you update the current <laughs> hot butt rankings, please? Wow. All right. So, and Greg, just the qualifier here. Um, I'm not celebrating the job, lack of job security for these men. And I know their staff and the families involved. This is just the reality of the sport. Okay. Not this is the hot, this is the coaches under fire, not actually. I, I, yes, I, yes. Yeah. It's, I, it's more the sound effects. Uh, well, that, that really, I think. Does, uh, doesn't underscore the point you made. That's show business, baby. <laughs> All right, so like I said <laughs> weeks ago, and I've been proven correct, and I think even Schefter reported on it a couple weeks back, this could be unprecedented in terms of how many dismissals we have come Black Monday and around that. We've already lost two coaches. I have I have a list of 10 here, and I'm going to put in an order of hottest butt to pretty hot butt. Ron Rivera won. Yeah. Stop me whenever you disagree, Steve. Uh, Brandon Staley, two. Dennis Allen, three. Mm. Belichick at four. Ibra Flues, five. Salah, six. Artie Smith, seven. Ooh. Yeah, he's not He's not going to get fired. Okay. Todd Bowles, eight. Vrabel at nine. And I know he's not going to get fired. Different situation. He's and uh, Sean McDermott at ten. Yeah, the McDermott one's going to be real and a real interesting one to watch. Well, this this doesn't feel like now there are always surprises like yep. Vrabel, you know, fulfilling Patriots fans dreams and like somehow going there, getting traded or something would would God, would be a surprise. Good young quarterback, man. I don't know if you want to leave. But that. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Like, so maybe there is surprise. But then this, now I look at this list and it's like actually the over under is around eight, which is normal. Right. Uh, 
I would put Dennis Allen slightly lower than than who are the ones right below him? Belichick and Eberflus. They feel like they're almost certainly. I, th- I think. I think he's. Whereas Dennis Allen. No, I think he's about the final hundred meters of the Green Mile. Team. I I <laughs> tend to agree because I don't think they'll win the division. But if they won the division, but here's then, the thing, maybe if if you guys are all in that. So Rivera, Staley, Allen, Belichick, Eberflus. That's five plus two oh, already. I for, I yeah. So already up to I seven. Forgot the two. Yeah. That I, happens. I, I, yeah. Forgive me. I forgot about the tour guy. Then, I, I think he's. Yeah. Well, I think he's done a good job. But like, is is Todd Bowles like a rock solid like sticking around guy? No. Yeah, I just think it's like it depends who else becomes available sometimes with these situations. Correct. So, you know? Correct. If you're, you have that many openings, how deep are you going into the well? Yeah. And also, where do they view their development? If they view next year as a little bit of a well, they've got, resetting. They got, yeah, they've you know, got to like, reset. Do we, do we just want Bulls to get another chance for that year and then then save? It. That's a lot of years. I mean, it's like how like teams don't spend two years just sitting around doing. I mean, they're not. There, there wasn't a lot of pl- like a purpose to this Buck season so far. Uh, well, I, th- I think I think they felt they had enough veterans, and, and their their cap was in such a way like, okay, let's yeah. give this a shot. But they've got to, them and the Saints have got to have their final salary cap, older player reckoning, coming up in the next year or two. And I think that's when you clean everybody out. Um, yep. and I'm just gonna say, Arthur Smith, do you think he's got enough rope there to survive three straight seasons without the playoffs potentially? If they go seven and ten, I think uh, for a third straight year, I think he's in trouble. But I, I think they'll they'll win enough games this year to contend. I think they'll give him an opportunity to get a quarterback. Um, you know, they stifled the process by flirting with the Deshaun Watson stuff one year, and I think kind of, you know, they didn't they didn't end end, end up not getting him. Yeah, but I think he will get one more year because I think he can coach. I think or you know organizing the overall team has taken some time, but if they get a quarterback, they're going to be they're going to be a dangerous football. Their schedule is is quite easy too. It's very but there is a there is a Hunger Games feel to this these the end of this NFC South season because it's Tampa, Atlanta, New Orleans all playing each other. Yep, and feeling like mm. maybe only one coach. You got to win the division to one truly gone. feel safe. Yeah, I, I still think Arthur Blank will be patient with him. He's he's been okay. patient with most of his head coaches. Well, luckily for him, I think he's they're the most likely. They got a yeah. game up and they got the most talent. Hunger Games. I would have went with uh, what's that uh, the the Japanese death show on Netflix. Be a little more current. Squid Games. Squid Games. I would have went with Squid Games as the pop culture ref there. Oh wow! Or we can go classic Lord of the Flies. Oh, go with that. <laughs> Throw back. All right, uh, Steve, you've said it all. Please plug, Steve. Where can people see you, hear you? Read Here we go on Mondays and Thursdays with James Palmer. It is the NFL Report. Keep on check this out. Check good it stuff. out. Yeah. Good guests. Good on that stuff. Show. Good guest. Yeah. Good show. This week we'll have Al Gingold and Derwin James along with Steve Smith and Brian Baldwin on Thursday. Find us on Roku, Tubi, Pluto, and all of your fast channels. Uh, and then and on, as a podcast. You're so much better and, and than us. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then on Sundays, uh, the game day preview with Andrew Siciliano, Cynthia Freeland. Uh, I don't know who our fantasy guest will be this week. I think it's Adam Rank. Uh, nice. Not quite sure, but that's a very good show. Great reporters up to kick off. Getting good information there, so good stuff. There he is. Thanks Conscience. for having me, guys. Always a great time. Really fun. And uh, we'll be back Thursday with our Thursday triple header. Uh, stay tuned for that. Until next time. Heed the call. Turn this up in my headphones. Steve Weiss. <laughs> Steve Weiss. On the ATM podcast. And everything is all right. Steve Weiss. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That guy. I know who you're talking about.